Hello everyone, this is Daniel Smiley and on behalf of Ozone Engineering Corporation, I'm going to talk about SI wave and ice bag when it comes to thermal analysis of uh, PC board. So in today's presentation, I'm going to use this PC board as you can see here and show you how we can read different temperature at different points of the PCB and uh, do the DCI or analysis where the current might increase the temperature and that temperature increase or change or decrease the behavior of your uh, copper or any other traces and then that also change the effect of current. So we'll go uh, through that in a minute but before that let me just um, tell who we are. We are uh, an allied channel partner of ANSYS uh, we use multi-physics based simulation to solve multidisciplinary engineering problems. Uh, we have expertise in FEA, CFD, and high and low frequency electromagnetics problem and project. Uh, please reach, uh, feel free to reach to us at support at as ozoninc.com as it's written here. It's also written in the description. Uh, if you have any question or you need any software or any support so briefly about the the ice pack and its feature ice pack is a great software that uh, you can use to do the thermal analysis the great uh, thing about uh, ansys is that it can be coupled with maxwell with qd q3d hfs s3d layout and hfss and si wave that i'm going to uh, talk about today so I'm not going to cover any of these today, but uh, the SI wave, however, I wanted to mention this. So you become aware of the coupling between the software if you don't know about it yet. Uh, so uh, I'll very quickly talk about a couple of them here and then I'll go to the software in a second. So one of the example is HFSS 3D layout and uh, you can use the DCI solver uh, that is available in electronic desktop. As you can see on the right hand side, you can calculate the power density, the voltage profile, and then eventually the temperature profile of your uh, PCB board. And you can connect it to the ice pack, either couple it or export the file from HFSS 3D layout and then import it to ice pack. That applies to other software as well. Uh, this is one of the results when you can uh, analyze both AC and DC. Uh, losses and you can uh, analyze the electrothermal workflow uh, with HFSS 3D layout. So let me go back to the software here and uh, look at the PCB board that I showed you to, at the beginning. As you can see, this is uh, a PCB that we have here. It has a uh, few components and different layers. Uh, let me as you can see these are the these are all the layers that we can see here. Zoom out just to give you a sense of the these are different vias. I'm just rotating these two and different as you can see component and port here, just to give you a sense of how complicated the the PCB is here. So we'll go back to view and look at it from top view and zoom out. Okay, so the very first thing that we need to do is that we need to uh, check for the uh, PCB board and verify or uh, sanitize it. There is a wizard follow that we can use. So we go to uh, pad is, uh, stack pad as at, at, the at the beginning. I already changed uh, or modified whatever was needed, but you uh, you should uh, check the thickness, type and conductivity and you can change the uh, uh, different uh, parameters here. And once you check it and you make sure everything is fine, you hit OK. So you'll see it will be a green check mark here in a second. So the, we will go through the same process for uh, verify paddy stack, circuit element parameter. And at the end, we sanitize the light. As you can see, the check mark appears. So that means we, are, we check that. Here, we uh, look at different uh, pad stack that we have. And uh, we can change uh, the, 
let me choose one of them that is more appropriate you can change the ratio as you can see it is changing here so for now we choose the absolute value if you already set that and then uh, there are the parameters here uh, as you can see we have the the, the capacitor that we have uh, i'm just showing this so you have a sense of the the pcb that we're working with so we have uh, inductors here uh, some resistor we didn't define in port as of now and uh, the voltage and, and current source uh, are here as you can see which are for the uh, chips uh, that i'll show you in the uh, in, in this presentation in a second and this is the voltage sorry here i, I meant voltage probe not voltage source so this is fine too and then uh, we verify that this is uh, you can you, you can do it automatically when once once you do the auto uh, identify I already did that, so it differentiates between something that is non-power and something that is power net. If there is a specific net that you are aware of, uh, you can do that uh, manually here and change them up and down. So that's the next step. And then you go to sanitize. This is if you want to sanitize it, I don't click on it. I already did that. Just wanted to show you it takes a while. So once you do that, then we need to go to the DCIR analysis this is where the um, thermal analysis is started so so far we just we're trying to make sure everything is set up right for our base model so uh, once we do that we can choose uh, for instance uh, uh, some nets here let's choose these nets and these three nets uh, we can hide the RLC or if uh, we can show them for now it's it's better to hide it just for uh, being more convenient and then make sure you have your uh, current source and voltage source here if uh, there is no current and voltage source it doesn't make to, doesn't make sense to do the dcir so we need to find why it's, it's not there and then uh, add them manually if needed uh, so as you can see here this is the this is the uh, current source which goes to this reference as well as uh, the voltage uh, this current source that goes to u to a5 which is uh, one of the chips so as you know we have voltage source and current source in in pcbs so once uh, we, we uh, choose that you can you can all you can save the configuration if you need to uh, you can also load it if you have predefined uh, so you can like save this and uh, load it uh, next time that you want to uh, run your analysis. Then uh, we hit uh, configuring the simulation. And we see the check mark here. Next, we need to validate. This validation, we can do it before or after. It doesn't matter. It's just whatever you feel more comfortable. When I say before, I mean, uh, you go to the home and there is a validated bottom there so it should make sure you choose the right number of cores and you can choose what you want to check here you can for instance select dc short error or the vis if you if you like to but i recommend to um, put a check mark next to all of them and once you click okay as you can see the, the progress starts uh, some of the errors you need to change them manually, but some of them there are auto fix. So if the software is able uh, to auto fix them, it'll do that for you, which is uh, very uh, convenient. I always uh, try to go through those uh, auto fix and make sure it, it makes sense what the software is doing. Uh, it's very reliable, but it's always good to ch check that out. As you can see, everything is fine here. Yeah, if it wasn't, it would say like, for instance, three error and uh, you can select auto fix and auto fix it, or you can, you can say out of those three, too often we're out to fix and one is left or three out of three is out to fix. So uh, once we do that here, we hit the simulation button. And here is, uh, we can uncheck or check this, uh, box it's good to check it uh, because it gives you some uh, 
file that you can export to uh, ice pack and then you can also import the temperature uh, temperature map from ice pack if you need to if not you can just uh, set a, a uniform design temperature and you can uh, put different temperatures here 20 30 or, or whatever you, you prefer usually we put 20 or 20 uh, five um, Celsius here. So uh, we go and launch this. I'm going to pause this uh, here and uh, uh, come back after the simulation is done. So the the simulation is done here, as you can see, and uh, this is the DCIR result. We can plot the current and voltage here. So you can have power, as you can see. Let me hide everything here. You can look at the power, uh, which is what per, per qubit at different uh, layers. You can choose, for instance, the power layer and shows the power here. You can choose the voltage and look at the voltage or uh, J, which is the, as you can see, there are arrows here that shows you where the current is going. If they're like current source, you can see they're, uh, the current going to them in one layer and getting out of them in another layer. Or you can uh, look at the different, uh, the, the, current uh, when you click on IV and for instance, yeah, close it. So uh, once you do that, I just wanted to show you how this works. So uh, you can uh, plot the ice pack uh, uh, power map. You can also export the ice pack power map if you want to use it in ice pack. Uh, that's one way of doing it. However, at this point, we are not going to do that. We're going, as you can see, we're going to uh, click on ice pack here. So here is where we start uh, simulating for the thermal analysis. So um, we should choose the setup name and then choose DC. DC simulation result. As you can see, this name should be same as uh, the name over here. There is a drop down menu. So if there are a few of them, make sure you chose the right one. Uh, then uh, you choose the DC power convergence. Uh, you want to do it at 1%, half a percent, 0.1%, uh, whatever you want to do that. So that, that makes a different iteration. So what happens here is that uh, the DCIR simulation gives the uh, power output based on that ice pack does the thermal analysis. And once that is done, uh, the result is uh, imported again to the, to the PCB. And that, as you know, for instance, for the copper, it changed the behavior of the copper because the temperature has changed. So then the DCIR runs the simulation again, and then uh, it, it makes the new uh, power map. Uh, ice pack uses that power map again and uh, run the simulation and to generate the new uh, temperature map. So that temperature map again goes back to the PCB. And that is a loop that goes over and over and over till the convergence is below this point. So that is uh, up to you what you want to choose. Uh, you can always choose this one at, at the middle. And then the thermal environment, uh, we go with the natural convection here. Uh, these are the uh, gravity vector. We chose only y direction because uh, in this simulation it is going to be on the table we assume the pcb is sitting on the table if you have angle on your from your on your pcb you choose you should choose different uh, access to and fill them up properly also you can uh, forget about the natural convection and if you have a fan you can use the force convection and put the speed of your fan and the temperature of the fan also you can choose the direction of the fan going through your uh, PCB. Uh, here, uh, you can choose heat sink. Uh, so in the simulation, we use heat sink for one of them. And uh, some of them, the heat sink, as you can see, is not available. So for those, you can uh, exclude them. 
and here is just the padding uh, if you have a, a box around it how, how much the padding you want to be on the horizontal or uh, vertical so I chose 2550 percent so once again we go back to the setup make sure everything is fine it's set up as, as we want and then we click uh, launch this uh, with, will take a while so I'll stop again here and come back to you after the simulation is done Okay, so I ran the simulation and here we see the result. As you can see, there are uh, three iteration for DCIR and two iteration for IcePack, meaning that the iteration was done and then the result went to IcePack and then IcePack ran the simulation, but it wasn't uh, close to the threshold that we set the 0.4%. So it ran it again. So it'll, it'll keep running it till it, it satisfied that uh, condition. As you can see here, it was two iteration. So let me show you how it looks like. So you can right click and say display temperature. As you can see, these are the temperature. When I go to the next one, there would be a very slight difference. Please uh, take a look at this border or this border here. They move a little bit to the left. So. just happened I don't know if you noticed but let me try it again now if I put it back it, it it'll shift a little bit to the right look at here it shifts to the right yes so um, this is uh, the way we do the uh, thermal analysis in SI wave and as you can see you can move your mouse around and it shows you the temperature at different location and as you can see here this is very hot it's about 124 um, so when we add uh, the cooling and the fan this can change so just one more time to show the analysis we can go we go to DCIR and then run it and then once this is done we go to ice pack and change the uh, threshold here and we also choose uh, if you want to have a fan driven flow if you use the fan uh, the temperature here will decrease significantly uh, i hope you enjoyed this um, presentation again uh, this is daniel smiley from the engineering corporation we use multi-physics based simulation uh, to solve multidisciplinary engine problems. We have expertise in FAE, CFD, low frequency and high frequency electromagnetics. If you have any question or you need any consultant or any ANSYS product, please feel free to reach out at support at ozoninc.com. Have a wonderful day.